so here we got an idea about the materials and uh, their classification electrical conductors and uh, insulators so now we are trying to understand what is the difference between these two materials right why metals are conducting the electricity why not the other materials like uh, nylon or plastic or wood right so that may be the reason is here as we learned in our chemistry about especially atoms atoms having the free charges electrons they are moving around when you just so here metals are present with large number of uh, electrons free charges right comparing with the nylon or plastic or wood etc right so here simply why do all materials not act as conductors the reason is having the different number of charges in them so in which materials electrons you know electrons right electrons free charges right they are not move freely they do not move freely they do not conduct the electricity so we are expecting what we are predicting electrons are moving freely in the metals right so here how does that uh, simply uh, conductor transfer energy or does a conductor transfer energy from source to the bulb it is because of a medium that is connecting wire that medium is what connecting wire so two terminals are there with a battery so positive and negative they are connected through the wire so that material is important in conducting the energy so without that is it impossible it is impossible so here they are conducting the energy right because of moment of charges through the material medium called a conductor connecting wire as we observed in situation 1 so it may be because of moment of electrons through conductor as we observed in situation 1 so there is no doubt to accept this one. then here simply one theory is proposed by drude and lorentz in beginning of 20th century right so scientists drude and lorentz proposed that conductors like metals contain a large number of uh, charges right so the charges are what here positive charges and negative charges both are there positive charge is there and negative charge is there in a, a conductor called metal metal wire metal wire so that metal wire is situated with the two types of charges okay then they are uh, proposed one more thing about a uh, which type of charge is moving motion of charges simply about motion of charges so here they proposed a particular kind of charge is fixed so according to our knowledge about the atom which what are the charges are fixed what type of charge is free or uh, freely available in the atom they are here positive charges fixed in the nucleus there is no change in the count of protons in any condition but there is a change in the count of uh, electrons when they are ready to participate in the bond formation right so electron count is maybe varied so that is the reason to maybe predict about that uh, positive charges are fixed and electrons are available free in the metal so electrons are free charges positive ions are fixed in their locations can anybody have doubt to accept this one are you accepted this fixing positive charges why is it fixed because there is evidence in the atom in the structure of atom or in the atoms molecules or what is inside atom we learned about positive charges are fixed in the atom so what is metal actually it is a substance all the substances are made up of what particles that particles are called as atom atoms having electrons protons neutrons 
So now it is clear why I am dealing no atoms in this electricity. Is your quick reaction? If you are doubtful, you have quick reaction to expose your feeling. Right? Don't put me eyes just a doubtful or confused on your feelings. Right? So I don't have any idea about that. What your understanding if you are silence. Right? So positive charges are fixed in their locations, electrons are available freely. Then that are what the electrons are moving in the atoms, right? So what the charges are fixed in their locations, they have a space. So that space, what is available with the fixed positive charges is named as lattice. So lattice is what? It is a space, right? So I am showing you a figure. The positive charges are fixed in their location. Then only the electrons are available freely. Right around the positive charges. So that we are showing on the screen here that uh, lattice is what it is a space which is fixed with uh, or arranged with the positive charges. So the arrangement of uh, the positive ions is called a lattice. In the lattice only, we are able to see movement of electrons because they are moving around the nucleus, around the positive charges. Right? So that we are trying to understand here. Then we got clear idea about according to Drude and Lorentz theory that positive charges are fixed in their locations called a lattice and the electrons are moving around the nucleus constantly, continuously. Right? So now we are trying to understand Right? We are trying to understand about the behavior of uh, electrons in the lattice space. Right? Behavior of electrons in the lattice space. So here, electrons are fixed in their locations? No. They are located as uh, orbital, degenerate orbital, whatever it may be. But they are moving. They are not in rest position. Continuously, they are moving. Right? In the atom. That means here in the conductor also. Conductor is fixed with many number of atoms. Suppose that molar concept you learned. Within one mole, how many number of molecules are present? 6.023 into 10 to the power of 23 molecules per mole. So that many number of atoms are there within one gram molar mass. Right? So, large number of electrons are present within a conductor right so based on the area we are able to get that count also but before going that just try to understand the behavior of electrons so assuming a conductor assuming a conductor that which is free from that free of terminals that means not connected to a source or switch off that is called a open circuit in that you are considering a wire. So assuming a wire. So that wire consisting large number of electrons, large number of electrons, and they are moving randomly. So how do they move randomly, sir? Because uh, in a Bohr atomic model or in a Sommer field model or quantum mechanical model, whatever it may be, they are proposed, they are moving in a fixed boundary called orbit in a specified direction, sir. Then again, you are giving me random direction. What the confusion you are creating, sir? Have you got the doubts? Are you doubtful like this? No doubts? So you are very clear about that. Everything? Just think differently. Then only you will gain your subject knowledge. Without that, doubts, no improvement you are in, in your knowledge. So I have a doubt. So what way you are explaining to clear my doubt? Simple. Here, atoms are fixed in their locations. Right? If you think about these atoms are fixed in different locations, right? So around them they are having the orbits. Right? Around them they are having. So every electron moving in the suppose clockwise direction assumed. Right? So many things, many particles you are assuming around the atom. 
right? Suppose in your sequence, if you are assuming they are moving in the clockwise direction, okay, right? So like this, you can see the motion, right? So everywhere they can found at same speed and the same location or same direction. No, sometimes it may be opposite. Suppose here one of the particle is moving with a constant speed and the other particle having the electron to start here this direction. While the one particle moving down and the other particle moving up. Are you following me? Have you got that idea? Suppose use your clocks. Use your clocks. Right? Start that uh, observing the seconds needle, right, in different uh, ways. So inside the cell, just having a uh, half minute gap. In the first uh, uh, clock you inserted a cell means, in the second clock you are inserting the cell, maintaining half minute gap. Then what about that uh, needles? They are maintaining the same direction, okay. But in the different ways. So number of clocks you can imagine having the half minute gap. Then you can find that needles rotation orientation in different ways. One is coming upward and the other going downward. Right. So like that you can imagine many atoms here. Right. I'll show you that. But I'm giving you idea in your daily life how you are able to realize this one. Moment of electrons around the nucleus. Nucleus is what? The point where the pins are, needles are centered, located, fixed. Right? So here, when the conductor terminals are free from that source, open circuit, so the electrons are moving randomly in the lattice space. So now here the number of electrons are available. So crossing the cross section area of conductor from left end to right end or right end to left end will be considered to be equal how sir so just to look at the screen here clearly right so before going that just i'll give you why they are doing so here this cylindrical shape is what i'm assuming a conductor right and assuming a conductor so within the conductor according to Drood and lawrence what they said their positive charges are fixed and the negative charges are moving randomly. So I'm not showing you positive charges, I'm giving you only the negative charges moment. So negative charges are located in their locations, right? When the terminals are free, what about that electrons moving randomly? So here, this is I'm assuming the cross section, no thickness for this, just it is very, very negligible thickness. Right, two dimension. Right, so that is cross section area in a circle form, radius. Right, so this is the cross section area. Then, here now try to observe the motion of electrons in the conductor. Right, so look at now here the particles are moving within the conductor. Now they are crossing the cross section area also. Look at that, they are crossing the cross section area left end to right end. Just try to see that particles, how many are particles crossing the cross section area from left end to right end and from right end to left end. Can anybody answer me? How many number of charges are crossing the cross sectional area from left end to right end and right end to left end? Do they have any difference or the same? Picture. What you observed here, number of charges crossing the cross sectional area. Do you see them crossing cross sectional area? Yes, sir. How many are crossing? They are in different number or same in count? Left end to right end or right end to left end? Yeah, in different. No, same number, right? So maybe you are unable to count here. Just uh, focus on this uh, dark colored particles. See, they are crossing left and to right end. To left to right and right to left. Same. 
See that same number in a given time. See now, yes. But try to observe closely. Only just focus on the dark colored particles. They are crossing from left end to right end and right end to left end in same number. Right. So here from this observation, from this observation, what I am trying to say the number of electrons crossing the cross section of a conductor from left to right in one second is equal to of electrons passing the cross sorry passing or crossing the cross section from right end to left end right equal in number so is there any change in the net charge difference no change left end what you have the net charge right end also same no difference in the net charge available in the conductor through this cross section especially no charge is crossed the crossed okay crossed but left to right right to left that is same so that's why here there is no difference in the net charge crossing the cross section so it is considered to be zero are you clear about this point oh, how i can consider net charge is equal to zero net charge is what uh, some of the charges crossing left end to right end and right end to left end are equal so that's why i am saying the net charge difference is zero no charge is flow actually charge is in motion in an open conductor free conductor so when you take a wire piece into your hand in that also electrons are flowing electrons are flowing so here that electrons are flowing in a conductor when it was free but there is no current passing why here the net charge is equal to zero net charge is equal to zero that motion of electrons only responsible for the flow of energy they are actually moving means they must conduct the energy but conducting what happened they become zero left end to right end and right end to left end so that's why net charge is equal to zero in an open conductor that try to see the pixel particles and the motion of electrons in an atom look at red color spots are here positive charges fixed in their space and uh, the particles uh, has color is given here electrons moving randomly different directions see here there is no fixed direction for them have you realized now electrons and protons within the conductor so you got visual effects positive charges and negative charges in the conductor so this is you realize after observing these figures right so this is about positive charges fixed according to drood and lorentz theory and the electrons are in random motion within the particle so within the conductor that net charge crossing the cross section area in a unit time will be considered to be zero because number of charges crossing cross section from left end to right end is equal to the number of charges crossing the cross section in that particular one second is equal count is is equal so net charge difference is zero that charge difference is zero crossing the cross section right then here now you are trying to understand what happens to the motion of electrons when the ends of conductor connected to the battery so when it was free what we realized they are moving randomly then what happens if you connect that ends of the wire to the battery right so that we will discuss tomorrow already time is seven o'clock we need to go to our schools so that's why here i am